I'm a community education officer. I work as a community education officer as part of the fisheries education program at DPERD which is Department of Primary Industries and Regional Development. I job share with Kylie. Uh, we share the role, uh, we get along really well, we work really well together, so it's a, real, it's a real asset to the position. I have always been really passionate about the ocean. I grew up on the ocean, um, at the beach. I've always just really wanted to know everything I could to know about the ocean and everything that's in it. I guess I've always been, had a really strong interest in conservation in uh, different types of environments, so aquatic environments and land-based or terrestrial environments. We've got two elements to what we do. We do um, school education and also community engagement. So a lot of the school education involves um, time in the office doing planning, um, planning hands-on, um, fun engaging activities for the kids. It could be uh, doing fish dissections with students in a school in the morning. It could be popping out to a boat ramp to talk to fishers as they come in or go out on their boats uh, to talk to them about rule changes or some of the science behind the management. Being the face of the department really is what we do. Connecting with people and helping them to understand when people have that aha moment that's a really, really positive thing for me. I've done my job in communicating that piece of information that they need. I guess when people have a blatant disregard for the rules, and so while there's so many people trying to do the right thing and follow the rules and be sustainable, there's a very small minority who take our fisheries resource for granted. We often get some very grumpy customers. Often when I talk to people and particularly young kids and ask them what it is that they think that I do, uh, they think I get to go fishing every day and that I'm out on a boat all day on the water and it's, sadly it's not the case. People often come up to us and ask us to identify a certain fish so they might try and describe it to us or they might show us a photo of it on their phone and so we can often help with that sort of thing. We always get asked what's the oldest fish. It's, it's a, it's a interest point for people. Um, they want to know what the oldest fish is that's ever lived. Um, in Western Australia, the oldest fish that we've ever aged was a deep sea cardinal fish, a very ugly fish, caught in about 600 metres of water. Um, and when our scientist aged it, it was um, 95 years of age, which is the oldest, and that was found only just last year. Our scientists have to do stock assessments on different populations of fish. For that to happen, they need to sample a certain number of a particular fish species, let's say herring, that's one current one that's happening on the south coast, and within the year, they'll need 500 herring samples. One of the problems is having enough people donate them for us because we're unable to go fishing. As much as we'd like to go fishing for work, we can't go fishing for work. So we do need people to donate um, those fish frames and um, sometimes it can be quite tricky getting people to actually donate them to us. So I guess one problem is, is how do we get more, how do we get exactly what we need and how do we get more people helping out and hearing about that project and getting involved. The wide open spaces, it's, it's clean, it's beautiful. I definitely will always recommend voluntary experience. If you have um, some spare time in your life over school holidays or between, um, between school and when you're going to be going to university, doing volunteer work goes a really, really long way. Follow your passion. Do really try and think what is important to me, what matters to me, um, what am I interested in and pursue avenues to find out as much as you can. If you have a, a career in science, you're going to be having lifelong learning and discoveries and innovation and um, I think that's what keeps you ticking.